This episode of Behind the Song is about a tune co-written by one of the great characters of rock history, Joe Walsh. As a member of the James Gang and later the Eagles, and as a successful solo artist or on his many other collaborative projects through the years, you know his guitar playing almost without having to know who you're listening to. It's a feel and a style that sets him apart and it's as unique as his personality. And what a personality he has. Joe Walsh was a student at Kent State University when the massacre happened in 1970, and he later ran for president before he was even old enough to qualify for the position. He's been married five times, lost a daughter in a terrible car accident, and dated Stevie Nicks, who claims that he was the love of her life. He overcame a drug and alcohol addiction after having an epiphany in New Zealand. He's an amateur radio fan and DJ, and he was taught to play slide guitar by none other than Dwayne Allman. And it was his addition to the Eagles in 1975 that gave the band a new dimension, a rock and roll wildness that resonated with fans in a new way even though Don Henley thought he was maybe a little too wild for the band at first. Joe Walsh was the salt in the stew. And while he didn't always sing lead on Eagles songs, he certainly did get a few in there. This is the story of In the City, a song he co-wrote for the soundtrack to the 1979 film The Warriors and released as a solo artist and a song that was then quickly re-recorded and re-released by the Eagles that same year for what would be their final studio album, The Long Run. If you like this episode, don't forget to give it a like at the end and hit that subscribe button. The story of how the song came to be written in the first place is a result of geography, beginning with songwriter Barry Dvorzen who was hired by the studio producing the film to write the score for the Warriors. Now this next section includes spoilers. So if you haven't seen the Warriors, hit pause on this episode, go watch the movie, and then come back. Dvorzen had a long pedigree in music, having written hit songs going back to the late 50s. He signed the association to a record deal in the 60s, among other things, and had written music for The Carpenters and for TV shows like The Young and the Restless, with a long list of composing credits in TV and movies. Dvorzen was brought on to score the music for what would be the cult classic thriller, The Warriors. The movie centers around a New York street gang called The Warriors, who are framed for the murder of a rival street gang leader and must travel from the Bronx to their home turf in Coney Island, escaping retribution from other rather terrifying gangs along the way, and by the voice of a faceless radio DJ who chronicles the whereabouts of the gangs and even helps put out a hit on the Warriors over the airwaves. The weekend after the movie was released, violence at movie theaters in Southern California and in Boston resulted in three deaths and extra security had to be hired for the showings in hundreds of theaters across the country. Paramount Studios had to change their advertising for the film and pay costs to the theaters for the security and the damages. The violence and the turf wars on the screen resonated with real life gangs who flocked to the movie and acted out accordingly. Because of the danger around showing the film, it didn't make a lot of money at the box office, but it did end up being one of the most controversial and most popular pulp films ever made. Its reach is long. Video games, books, board games, and more have been inspired by the Warriors. It was the subject of a Simpsons TV show episode, and even the name of the band The Outfield was inspired by one of the opposing gangs in the film a rival gang to the Warriors named the Baseball Furies. Of course, none of this could have been foreseen by Barry Dvorzen, who got the call to write the score for it while living in Santa Barbara. 
In a happy coincidence of geography, Joe Walsh just happened to be his next door neighbor. And he thought to call Walsh up to see if he wanted to co-write the end title song for the Warriors film. Walsh agreed and recorded in the city as a solo artist. His version plays as the Warriors finally arrive on their home turf in Coney Island in the last scene of the film, queued up by the radio DJ who had formerly helped put out a hit on the Warriors gang, who now announced that the big alert had been called off. It's the perfect ending song for this movie, summing up the struggles of the gang as they made their dangerous miles-long trek home strolling onto the beach at Coney Island as the sun came up over the ocean. And because it's Joe Walsh, it's a rocker too. The lyrics go like this. Somewhere out on that horizon, out beyond the neon lights. I know there must be something better, but there's nowhere else in sight. It's survival in the city when you live from day to day. City streets don't have much pity. When you're down, that's where you'll stay. I was born here in the city with my back against the wall. Nothing grows and life ain't pretty. No one's there to catch you when you fall. Somewhere out on that horizon, far away from the neon sky, I know there must be something better, and I can't stay another night. While the song is inarguably perfect for this movie, Walsh didn't release it as a single himself, although his version was included on the soundtrack for The Warriors, which was released in the spring of 1979, just after the film came out. Now, at that same time, the Eagles were working on their sixth studio album, The Long Run. That album was the follow-up to their hugely successful Hotel California album, and it took over 18 months to record and release. After Hotel California and the subsequent tour, the band were burned out, overworked, and were now, in 1979, dealing with the competitive rise of both disco and punk rock in popular music, two genres that they absolutely hated. Their famous infighting had resulted in Randy Meisner leaving the band, who was replaced by Timothy B. Schmidt. Don Felder was on his way out, too, although he remained a part of the band for the recording of The Long Run. Intended to be a double album, the Eagles found that they didn't have enough songs to complete that vision, even though they had contributing help from J.D. Souther and from Bob Seger, who co-wrote the sole number one hit on that album, Heartache Tonight. So, Barry Dvorzen got a call from Joe Walsh, letting him know that the Eagles were now interested in recording a version of the song that he had just written with Walsh for The Warriors. And of course, Dvorzen was delighted. He became one of the very few outside writers to have a writing credit on an Eagles album, when the Eagles version of In This City was released on The Long Run in the fall of 1979, just a few months after Walsh's version came out on The Warriors soundtrack. It is track three on side one of The Long Run. While In This City was never released by the Eagles as a single, it became popular on the radio anyway. The Long Run was the final studio album the Eagles recorded for Asylum Records, and the last before they disbanded in 1980. It has since gone seven times platinum. On a side note, on original pressings of the vinyl copies of The Long Run, you'll find the following text engraved in the grooves. Something the Eagles did as an inside joke on first pressings going back to the mid-70s. Side one says, never let your monster lay down. And side two says, from the Pollock who sailed north. That side two engraving may be a nod to their longtime producer, Bill Simzik, who worked with the James Gang and then the Eagles throughout the 70s and continued to work with Joe Walsh after their 1980 breakup. Simzik wasn't a musician himself. 
and got his start after taking some audio production classes while serving as a sonar operator in the Navy as part of his military training. Thus, the inside joke about their producer, the former sailor. It's a good little bit of rock trivia. The Eagles regrouped in the late 90s, of course, and Joe Walsh has released solo projects before and after their disbanding and regrouping along with collaborating with other artists, ranging from Ringo Starr to the Foo Fighters, and of course, on his bandmate Don Henley's hugely popular solo offerings. He overcame personal tragedy when his eldest daughter, Emma, was killed in a car crash at three years old in 1974. And he's been in recovery from drug and alcohol addiction since 1993. Recovery that he credits to a light bulb going off in his head while visiting an ancient site in New Zealand's Hawke's Bay region while on tour with a reggae band there in the late 80s. When he ran for president of the United States in 1980 at age 32, three years short of the required age of 35 to qualify, He promised free gas for everyone as his way of creating election awareness. And then he ran for vice president in 1992 with a peculiar New Orleans musician named the Reverend Goat Carson on the top of the ticket with the slogan, we want our money back. As a member of the Eagles, Joe Walsh was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1998. And his influence on artists who came after him continues to be as strong as ever. He reunited with the James Gang in 2022 to perform in a tribute concert for one of the James Gang's biggest fans, the late Taylor Hawkins of the Foo Fighters. In the lyrics to another Joe Walsh song, Life's Been Good, which was coincidentally featured in the soundtrack to another film, FM, Walsh says... They say I'm crazy, but I have a good time. Those words were his satirical take on rock stardom from a guy who knows everything about being a rock star and a musician in a rock and roll band. While he's sometimes known as the clown prince of rock for his off-the-cuff statements and take-it-or-leave-it personality, it's his incredible musicianship that we'll remember that we recognize as something great whenever he picks up a guitar. Because it was Joe Walsh who also said, the song tells me what to play. I'm Janda, and this has been Behind the Song. Special thanks, as always, to Christian Lane for the music you hear on these podcast episodes. Check them out on TikTok and everywhere you get your podcasts. And you can find me on the air at WDRV and WDRV.com in Chicago from 9 to 2 weekdays. On the way, much more classic rock and roll.